Hello, 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 everybody. I am J Malls of J Malls Gaming, and it's time for my final impressions of Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. Full spoilers ahead, because to properly break down and criticize Dawn Trail, I need to bring up spoilers. And I am going to sound harsh in this video, and it's for an extremely simple reason. I hold Final Fantasy XIV to a higher standard than I hold its competition. And I have said before and ranked Final Fantasy XIV as my favorite video game story that I I've ever experienced. That's how highly I view Shadowbringers and Endwalker together. But personally, I view the Point O story of Dawn Trail to be easily the worst Point O expansion story they've ever done. I think it's worse than Stormblood and Heavensward, and I think it's about on par with A Realm Reborn. And the only thing I think would drag A Realm Reborn below it is how repetitive A Realm Reborn can be at times. That is not to say that I think Dawn Trail is flat out terrible. I don't. I think it's solidly okay but I hold Final Fantasy XIV to a far higher standard than just simply being adequate. Because I know that they can do far more with less. Now, what were the goals and ambitions of Dawn Trail? It was essentially starting, if we ignore the patches of Endwalker, a brand new narrative arc. Stepping away from the Hydaelyn Zodiac arc, trying to literally go to a new world, develop a new cast of characters, new introduce new plot lines, and flesh out old ones so that they can be expanded on in the future. In this regard, I think Dawn Trail sort of succeeded, mainly in laying out and fleshing out certain story elements that can be expanded on in the future in interesting ways. However, a story is more than what can be recontextualized years and years down the line, and a story, let alone a point o story, should be fully engrossing and engaging from start to finish and not be reliant on recontextualizations or just found bits of foreshadowing way down the line. Because at the end of the day, foreshadowing is not character development. It is not a substitute, it's a seasoning. And you don't just eat a bowl of garlic powder, now do you? At least I wouldn't call it a wholesome meal. Now, we've broken down on this channel a couple days ago about the character of Wuklamat, who is essentially the punching bag of this story. And in my opinion, most of the issues with Dawn Chill, she's a victim of. That is repetitive writing, poor pacing, uninteresting activities, telling not showing, and subpar voice direction, at least in the English localization. And with Wuklamont being the MC of Dawn Trail, she's going to be front and center for a lot of these issues, and essentially take the flack for a lot of issues that I think are far more intrinsic to Dawn Trail than they are being talked about, and are merely being written off because Wuklamont kind of exemplifies these issues. I think Wuklamont gets better in the second half because the writing drastically improves, and and actually has egad nuance. And I will say, I don't think a lot of my perspective from my halfway impressions in Dawn Trail when I got to the invasion part really changed all that much. And I've been saying this for a while now, the first half of Dawn Trail suffers from a lack of interesting things to do, a lack of interesting and unique gameplay scenarios, revolves way too much onto, like, stereotypical storytelling I expect from gacha games, which is just a bunch of exposition dumps with characters standing in a circle yapping at each other, and then repeating Repeating the themes and messages or the exposition like five times in a row to, to make sure that the reader got it. Look, I understand that not every section from Endwalker was the most well-received thing ever, like escaping from Golemald in the body of a Galdian soldier or the Thancred stealth section. I do not believe that is an adequate enough of an excuse to shy away from trying new and interesting gameplay scenarios to allow the story to unravel while playing the game, not just watching a cutscene. The goal should have been to expand on them in interesting and fun ways, not to revert entirely from them. And the odd stealth section I do not think is adequate enough of a replacement, as they all kind of just feel the same, hide behind a rock when the enemy turns around and then just keep running at them. Now I will say, when we have those one-on-one -on -one interesting non-duty scenarios against Galul Jar Jar pretty much mainly, but also Bakul Jar Jar, I think they are well designed and they are fun to experience. There's just way too few of them, especially in the second half. It's all well and good to have lower stakes because you can't just keep going up and up and up from Endwalker because it'll get just silly. You have to recenter the story, ground it, and build your way back up from there. That's entirely fine, but that's not an excuse to have a lack of interesting things to do because interesting things to do are defined as interesting if we care about them. And when I'm spending half my time doing menial tasks I, ex I expect to see in either a beast job quest or a side quest, like taming an alpaca, which is done off screen, another section that should 
should have been an actual gameplay scenario, or we're building a bird float, or we're just making tacos, these aren't interesting things to do. Having a trading quest that goes on for way, 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 way too long than it should is not fun or interesting, it's just tedium. And for a lot of people who waited two years for a new point oh story to experience, because experiencing a patch story in its real bite-sized chunk of real estate is nowhere similar to a point oh expansion. So when we spend a point oh expansion doing activities that are largely uninteresting, it sours the experience and also compromises development and the furtherance of the theme that you're trying to go for. Because you're constructing this house on faulty foundation. There's also another element of Dawn Show that I think needs to be called out, and that is the characterization. I think it's woefully inadequate for Final Fantasy XIV, with the slight exception of Cryo, Aaronville, and Sphine. And that's wholly because of the second half. In the first half, when they're trying to develop characters for Tulia Lol, there's not a single character that I remotely care about. But Cool Jaja, a little bit, because of what they did in the Mamulja section on the Rite of Succession, which I thought was pretty good. But like, let's look at the promises. Zoralja is just a villain, and we're told that he's really dark and we shouldn't let him become a villain because of Kryl's Echo. We don't get a real showcased reason to believe that. We have Kona who is literally just a nerd, and we have Wukla Mott who is like if you try to make Naruto strictly for memory. They feel archetypical instead of being interesting and nuanced. They feel cookie cutter, and that's not what I expect to see out of Final Fantasy XIV. What I expect out of Final Fantasy XIV offer characters that feel cookie cutter at the very beginning, but the blossom and have their own identity within the game. I do. I still, at the end of Point O, do not feel any different to, in terms of Kona, Zoralja, or Wuklamat. And I'm putting greater emphasis on those three characters because they are three of the most important characters for all of Dawn Trail. There's always the disclaimer that they could recontextualize some characters or further the development down the line because Final Fantasy XIV is extremely capable of making you care way more about a character seemingly in one quest. I didn't care that much about Elidibus, and then 5.3 happened, and then Endwalker happened. They are completely capable of doing this. It was not shown or demonstrated within Dawn Trail for me. Outside, again, maybe Sphine. I want to take a brief aside to talk about the main character, the Warrior of Light. Sorry, by main character, you probably thought I meant Wuklamat. I meant the Warrior of Light. I hear some people bring up that they like the idea that someone else is taking a more front and center position for the MC instead of the Warrior of Light. This is something that I I personally do not understand, nor do I agree with it. I think it's largely because I just simply do not care about Wuklamot, but at the end of the day, in a game like Final Fantasy XIV, where we spend so much time with our main character, playing as the Warrior of Light, developing even ourselves as the character, I want our character to do more than just act as a glorified yap bag so that other characters can talk to and figure out their own problems by just using us as a glorified soundbar. The signs were largely there, there's no real memorable moment for any of them. It's standing in a couple of fun Funny lines, but I think he's wildly underutilized. I have no earthly comprehension why we didn't pal around with him in Aaronville throughout all of Shaloni. We had one nice section with Grahati on the gondola. That was kind of it. It borderline felt as if they tried to sideline Yashtola in a story that really should have involved her way more on the back end. And then they just kind of forgot about Kona for the second half as well. I understand he was supposed to be hunkering down the fort back at Tulialal, but he's like one of the most important characters that they were trying to actively develop throughout Dawn Trail, and then for half the story, he's barely even in it. I don't understand the pacing of Dawn Trail, and I don't understand who it's supposed to appeal to. Again, I am sounding harsh here, despite even saying that I enjoyed Dawn Trail, because I hold Final Fantasy XIV to a higher standard. From lesser games, I can understand and even write off a lot of the storytelling decisions that Dawn Trail made. Not for Final Fantasy XIV, because especially when you are trying to lay the groundwork and the foundation for a story that can blossom over the next 10 years or so, you need a better beginning than this. You got away with it with the Realm Reborn, it should not become a habit. The blueprint for establishing a new location with varied cultures that we are unfamiliar with should have been Shadowbringers, not a Realm Reborn. Because yeah, Shadowbringers was the penultimate expansion to this Heidelin Zodiac arc, but they still kind of isekai us into a brand new world right in the middle of a climactic moment and then still made us care about that new world to the point where a lot of people, myself included, didn't even really want to leave because interesting things happened that weren't just reliant on the idea that Shadowbringers was nearing the climax of this entire story. A lot of the reasons Endwalker had so much good payoff was because they were developed and introduced largely in Shadowbringers. 
So no, I don't view Dawn Trail being the start of something new to be a good enough of an excuse for shoddy development. Most of the trial succession was just boring, and it should have been completely either one, way shortened, or two, kept the same length of time and chunk of the game, but rewrite these scenarios to be way more interesting and involving. Wuklamat had so much potential to be a really compelling character, especially in like the student role to the Warrior of Light's teacher role. But because they'd actively decided to put the Warrior of Light seemingly on the backbone of the brunt of this story, that relationship was never really fleshed out in an interesting way and the Warrior of Light just stood there not really communicating or interacting with the actual events of the story too much. And I think as a direct result, Wuklamat as a character suffers. Because her development feels as if it was pulled out of thin air instead of being adequately developed and fleshed out. This is a common issue that I have with a lot of Dawn Trail. Another example is in the Mamulja by the succession. Why do we see Zoralja get off screen by the shade of Galuljaja? Why don't we arrive at the beginning of that fight, possibly even play as him, and see that fight happen? Why why is it off screen? And especially in the first half, the writing is so on the nose that it borderline feels condescending. Like they have Wu Clamart stand directly into the camera while they yap about friendship and understanding. Repeatedly. There's a reason people bring up telling not showing a lot, and it's because it's an uninteresting way to largely tell a story, especially in the medium of a video game. Show us these things, give us interesting gameplay scenarios to experience these things, and to feel it from the game and the events. Because writing in this style and in this vein feels as if the target audience is for those who have absolutely no reading comprehension. Because it lacks subtlety, and it lacks interesting scenarios to act as vehicles to convey these themes and messages. And it's themes and messages that we've already, largely already explored in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, learning about various cultures and the way people do things that we're unfamiliar with and using an understanding to bring everyone together to combat a greater threat and to work towards, like, a better future for everyone. Like, again, we've done this before. Like, that's the plot of Shadowbringers, largely. Yulmore, Lake Town, the Pixies, Rektika Greatwood. Like, that is what we do there. And it's handled way better because at the end of every questline, they don't just say in a circle, hey guys, isn't it great that we know what friendship is? And the events that we're doing there are interesting, that spur us forward into the next zone. And when it comes to the second half, I do think it's pretty good. It has some issues. One, it's basically Endwalker 2.0. The sixth zone is almost structurally identical to Ultima Thule, just with a few interesting deviations. And I like the final zone, don't get me wrong. I don't even mind the fact they're willing to take a risk and essentially make it a dead zone after you complete it, because I like the fact that the world can change because of the events that we do. I think that's a symptom of good storytelling, is that the world can change. It doesn't feel static. The events and the actions we have have action consequences that are permanent. I like that. I think Zeralja is still kind of an uninteresting villain, mainly because his dialogue is borderline non-existent out of, outside of like a couple of cool lines of dialogue that I can't even remember. But if you're going to do a villain that's a villain for villain's sake, you have to really rely on Rule of Cool. Man looked like a bootleg elite from Halo. Now, I'm a Halo fan, so I didn't necessarily mind that. But when you try to show him being really cool with killing Galul Jaja, the only thing I could think of was how everyone else is absolutely stupid and an absolute clown show because they all just stood around watching it happen for some reason. It was almost as if they were acting as if it was a movie. And then when Galul Jaw died, they're like, oh wait, oh my god, something happened in this story? But we also come to one of the greatest strengths of Dawn Chill, in my opinion, and that is the zone design. It's gorgeous. For the most part, I'm absolutely more a fan of the last two zones. Heritage Found and Living Memory are absolutely gorgeous. I even like Living Memory after the end uh, quest. After the finale, I still think it looks good. And I think Heritage Found is one of the coolest looking zones they've ever designed. I think Tuli Yalal is a beautiful city, and I think Solution 9 is absolutely captivating. And I need housing there immediately, by the way. Yeah, this is not a suggestion. This is not a request. It's a demand. Yeah? It's a demand. It's a need. A primal urge within the cock of my heart, possibly spleen, that I need housing in Solution 9. It's funny because I actually do kind of like the second half because actual things happen that are interesting. The invasion into Leolol, Estanian Vricha showing up to take out the Air Command, or the Air Fleet, whatever. Zoralja going against his own people in Solution 9 and trying to claim all their souls. Us actively shutting off his own. Things happen in the second half, interesting things happen. It's brought down a little bit because the characters we're supposed to really care about were compromised 
minimized because of the first half, namely Wu Clamart, Kona just not being involved. And I didn't mind Sphane. Uh, she's not my favorite villain in all of Final Fantasy XIV. I wouldn't call her the worst, though. And I think her actual fight is mwah, god tier. Such a good fight. Yeah, Wu Clamart coming in as if she's Xenos at the end of Endwalk at the big fringe. But the fight was so hectic, I barely even noticed her after, you know, the two second cutscene when she came in. I was mostly focused on just the actual fight. That's another thing. The fight design in Dawn Shell is absolutely stupendous. I made an entire video about fight design in Dawn Shell. Oh my god, it's so good. Like, the final fight, mechanically, is one of my favorite trials they've ever done. They're taking risks, they're trying new things, and I think they largely work, and they're really fun. While also being visual spectacles. So in terms of fights, and like, when there's actual gameplay, I think Dawn Shell's one of the best experiences they've ever done. It's the story, writing, and characters that I think are severely compromised in Dawn Shell. They can be bolstered later on, but I think Dawn Shell in the most part was a wildly missed opportunity. Because there's no characters I particularly look back on and great fondness outside of like maybe Sphane. I think what they did with Kryle was really good because that can be expanded on the future a lot and I already cared about the character Kryle. I think that was one of their biggest like diamonds in the rough here. Um, I still don't like Aaronville as much as a lot of other people but I don't mind him either. Like I, I would say I like him as a character. More needs to be done with him. I think they're clearly going to give him a job in the future. Kind of what they did with Kryle with Pictomancer. He'll get like the 8.0 or the 9.0 job. Something like that. Almost so I think he and Cryo will be two of the key characters going forward for us. I'll also say, Dawn Trail is way more closed book than I thought it would be. I thought Dawn Trail would end with some kind of big cliffhanger, and maybe the crown glowing at the end could be that in retrospect, but like right now, a lot of things got wrapped up in it with kind of a nice bow. But I wouldn't say Dawn Trail was bad, and I think the second half largely saves it, because I think the dialogue and the writing just gets more nuanced and interesting also in that second half, but it's not perfectly, you know, well, perfect throughout. There's like moments like, remember back in the giant section of Okopacha, and you had that little small contingent of giants, Yokoi, that didn't like Tulio Law, that want to go back to the old days of the Yokoi being conquerors and all that. To me, that's one of the worst written sections of all of Dawn Trail, surprisingly enough. Because they feel so cardboard. Like, they feel so cut out. Like, ugh, we like the old ways, we're the villains, we're not gonna like you all that much. MC does something nice for them. Ugh, wait a minute, maybe, you know what, maybe you got a point. We still don't like you. MC does another good thing. Wait a minute, actually you're kinda cool now. We'll change our ways. You know the meme a lot of people have to call writing like this Disney, and I've even called it Disney-esque writing before? That section did not help to shake the allegations. Also, having like the Disney song play in the credits did not help either. I didn't mind the song, I kinda liked it. I just found it kinda funny. Just with all the Disney memes surrounding Dawn Chill, and then they have this grandiose song that feels as if it came out of the Lion King. I mean, with Wukla Ma being, you know, a Hrothka, it kinda fit. So yeah, do I think Dawn Chill was as bad as a Realm Reborn? No. I I don't even think a Realm Reborn is necessarily all that bad. It's just really slow, especially in the patches. I think we could be in a situation similar to Stormblood where the point O story wasn't the most groundbreaking thing ever, but the patches were insanely good, especially if they have interesting buildup going into the new expansion. All you gotta do is raise the stakes slightly and have more interesting things happen. Because the moment more interesting things happened in Dawn Trail was that second half with the invasion and with Solution 9 and with with living memory, it became far more interesting and engaging to me. I would also say, I think one of the things they were trying to go for with Dawn Trail, especially in that first half, was this feeling of an adventure. I did not get that. The only time I really ever got that was, funnily enough, in the dungeons, like climbing the mountain or going on the boat ride down the Amazon. Outside of that, Tulia Lull felt weirdly small to me. And I know it isn't, but I think it's because the first half was largely just the Reddit succession. They needed more things that felt like the one expert dungeon that happens in Shaloni. Navigating ancient streets and having these wide, cool vistas to explore. It felt like a grandiose adventure, and we needed more of that in the main story. Also, by the way, never do this again, where you, like, tease us with the City of Gold at the end of the Rite of Succession, but you say we can't go in there yet, and then you have an entire filler zone in the middle before any of that comes back. Never do that again, by the way. It just made Shaloni feel way worse, because I'm just waiting for something cool to happen at that point. Like, Shaloni as a zone itself was fine. The placement was just bad, in my opinion. So yeah, overall, I think 
the duties and the fights themselves in Dawn Trail are absolutely stellar and awesome and they're great fun and I hope they lean more in that design direction in the future and I absolutely cannot wait for the Arcadian. Dawn Trail has its moments. The Mamulja scenario is pretty good. I like what they did with Bakul Jaja as a character. I thought the stuff with the giants, especially on top of the mountain, was really cool. And we had more interesting events in that second half. And I do like the final zone and that they're willing to have a zone change throughout the course of that experience. I really do like that. I don't want the game feeling static and I don't want the story feeling as if they can't take risks because some people might get upset about it. Dawn Shell had a lot of risks that it took. Some paid off, a lot didn't. Do I think it irrevocably soured Final Fantasy XIV for me? Absolutely not. I'm a big Final Fantasy IX guy, so the back end with all those Final Fantasy IX references was really good. Maybe they lead a little too hard in that direction. I don't know why they didn't call Otis Steiner. I don't know why. Maybe they're going to do that later down the line or they just didn't want to do it so directly. But I think it's safe to say Dawn Trail is my least favorite point oh story of any expansions they've ever done. It's also far and away my favorite in terms of the actual fights and the dungeons and the trials. And they teased some really interesting concepts. And I like what they did with Aaronville. I liked what they did with Sveen. And I liked what they did with Trial. So yeah, with that, I think I'll call the video there for the day. So thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and help support future content. And I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.